Hello, Joshua Kylan here. Um, this video you're about to see is me and my friend Devin down at Makerspace changing the glow plugs, the wire harnesses, and also install, installing a frost heater on my car on December 6th. This is April 20th, 2019. I just didn't get, get around to editing the video until now. Uh, I didn't film the the frost heater part because it's real simple. It gives it is given step by step directions, and I did the best I could with the glow plugs and fixing the harness. You'll hear a loud noise in the beginning. That is just a chop saw cutting some metal. Joy. Oh, it's also a really long video. It's about a half hour long, so please stick around till the end. What was that? Let's get these tens out of here and then. Engine cover off. You got stick in the tents, man. They're hard to find. Alright. Let's see what we're doing here. Sticking. Sometimes these also could be a. Oh no. I originally had that bench so you could lay parts out. Right. And the glow plugs are just chilling in there. Oh yeah, these are fucking totally roached. Yep. Are you going to end up having a full fuel filter too? I don't know. Find out when we cross that bridge when we get to it. Or at least loosen it. I thought it was going to burn that bridge. Whatever. That was Fred's way. That one was over 200 ohms. The next one was 1.6 with a 0.6 for the uh, I should test grab it. My... I already got an annex. Okay. Uh, oh, you got a little guy of it. That's all they said that I need. I got to hold. I mean, if you don't want to open that, I have like a can with a brush going, I think. Whatever. Like, let me see. I'll see if I got my, I think I got my NICs here. Um, oops. There's our gold plug. Uh, there you go. Yeah. That's actually not nice. No wonder why they uh, were garbage. They're a champion brand. Right, there we go. 11, These are 11. Yeah, this is 11 too. So that must just be... It's just, just the way it was manufactured. Uh, should be fine. Basho too. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Believe it or not, the ones that were next to this that said that they were OEM were like two millimeters short. Huh. Those ones are. Uh, uh, is my headlamp in my car? Yeah, it is. I'm gonna regret it. Never heard anything against using copper anisey. Like it does. I've I've also used anisey like fairly indiscriminately. Like my anisey, but it's just I don't know. It's like at plate bar and it's like lots of fucking anisey. It's like so you're gonna have to take this pipe out in order to get these. Sure. Okay. So. 
so you're going to have to? I don't know. Find out. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, I shouldn't say if Josh is still in it. Is it what? I said, I said where's the hole? No. Speaking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going on YouTube. I should be on my best behavior. Uh, no, that's that's what you need for the clicks. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you could you could edit this. You could just me raw, unfiltered, saucy. Uh, grumpy Devin. That actually wouldn't be a bad, like, shtick, like, basically, like, car work, but, like, AV style, where it's, like, actually would happen. Like, all these guys got on YouTube, they're like, you know, okay, blah, 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 you know, okay, now, next step. And it's, like, really dry and boring. Yeah. Like, fun where um uh and then torque to 11 foot pounds click <laughs> <laughs> so you don't even you just do it by hand i just i mean do you know the torque spec 11 it is 11 okay you know what i got it i got a torque wrench upstairs we'll, we'll get i'll go i heard the the torque spec is 11 foot pounds yep, for the so roll plugs. 132 inch pounds. And then I have been burned by like torque wrenches failing before, so I like to go like actually go in the ice and like. Uh -huh. And lock it up. That's right. That just feels. Like Or if you're using an inch pound, it's 132. Did you say no no on the big, big CNC? Uh, that's a long explanation. Yeah. Too long for right now. How many Newton meters we <laughs> I don't even know. It's like don't even bother. 12 points some. I don't know. We're working in freedom units. Yeah, well, it's actually. We'll do it right. There's 11. Alright. On the moment of the bar. So you're going to pull the whole coolant hose to replace the harness? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Well, like I said, Josh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Why did they. I broke number two. They didn't break. Oh, the boot. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. No, I meant, I was bitching about the the alignment of this sucks. Like, so I always like the stuff like this, especially when it's like an aluminum fastener in a or a steel fastener. Even though these are you know some alloy, of stainless, something, something. I broke or I have never personally broken one off, but I dealt with the aftermath of one of these being broken off due to dissimilar metal corrosion and. I always like to, when I'm dealing with like kind of sketchy fasteners, to not, you know, like slowly torque, but just pop. Like, you know, kind of like an impact gun or something. Like, when I'm dealing just with. Just so you have that sharp, right. sharp. And so, so like, these are actually a prime example. Like, like when I'm dealing with like Allen, like, folks like love to use Allen head fasteners or, you know, an internal hex socket head cap screw, blah, 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 whatever. Um, so, like, especially like, okay, this one's kind of shitty, you know. Like, it's got a bunch of shit in it, so like, what I'll do always is I'll get a pick, I'll clean that out, I'll put the socket in, I'll tap the socket in with a hammer, but I'll, when I actually go to loosen it, I'm not like, you know, I'm like, pop, pop, pop. Because cause if, you, if you start slowly reefing on it, like, these are such a crappy fastener anyway for this kind of thing that you start to strip them out. If, you know, it's old and rust stuff or whatever, but if you like, give it quick, you know, like, sharp blows. Yeah, so, so that's like, I feel like that head where, or, well, I put a new, new head on the car because um, my brother broke the glow plug off uh, and then drilling it out just turned into a nightmare. Um, I feel like that situation like maybe could have been avoided 
if uh, another one of these champion wolf bugs. Um, I feel like that situation could perhaps have been avoided if. Uh, yeah. This was actually the one that was good. Yeah. Oh, we'll All the boot was bad with us. Yeah. Uh, no, but the yeah. resistance was good. Um, anyway, though. Uh, where's my ASUS? Oh. Um, no, so like I said, when I'm dealing with like, especially like low torque fasteners that are like just like small, like oops, the the breaking torque of these glow plugs is so low, like like the whole glow plug body shears off at like 25 or something Holy stupid. Because the metal's really thin in here, like like the one I dealt with broke off right here, and then I like I think I pounded something in, it just broke off more. I TIG welded something inside, just broke off lower, broke off lower, and the threads were just roached. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Can these engines run without glow plugs? I mean, they, yeah, sure, when it's warm. Or if you're like ether or something. I mean, like, old Detroit diesels and stuff, like half those things do not have glow plugs. Uh, yeah, I mean, in summer, it probably is barely, I mean, if it's like 90 degrees out, it probably doesn't run the glow plugs at all. Are you using my uh, 10 millimeter? I am. Yeah. It's a clutch brand. Yeah. What is this oily residue on this EGR? Oh, so what those do is there's like a little, like, pop of that. No, there's like a little seal or something stupid. And it, so what it could be, it could be one of a couple things. It could be the, like, there's an o ring in here that could be failing. But I think That's not the EGR valve. Well, I mean the EGR like comes from the bottom. So, so, actually, no. That's the EGR valve. This is the cool one. Yeah. This is the pile of the bottom. No, this is the anti-shutter valve. So it's like a throttle. Oh, valve. for the turbo? No, I don't know why I did this. Really? It it opens when you like turn the key on, I believe. And then when you shut the motor down, it shuts it down to like keep the engine from shuttering a little bit as it shuts down. It's like barely. It's, it's it'll run 100% fine without it. It will just add it. Doesn't have it forever. Looks like a motor. Um, uh, engines didn't have them forever, and like sometimes they cause problems. But yeah, it's like a throttle butterfly that just is open or shut. Maybe on the VHW it's different than the old VHW. Can the cabin air filter is in here? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Why not have this place? Super easy to paint. You just pull like this strip out, and then oh, it doesn't have that. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You pull this whole strip out, and then that whole thing pulls out. And you might feel like a hidden corpse or something there. there. I haven't changed the cabinet filter on one of these in forever. You have a long time. Uh, my need for similar to the V5, but. Uh, do five and a half. I mean, it's the same car. Volkswagen, there's no axe, no connector. So you gotta cut and splice. I'll look. Yeah, I mean, I 
I like fishing. There is a connector somewhere. But do you remember I used or also used one of the cool ones Yeah. Yeah, uh, like an ALH. There's three, well it's not cool and sensitive. An ALH, maybe your car on the water deck has. Oh, it's really hard to see the cool plants on this. Um, so, I don't know why. This is another, like, weird, questionable thing that doesn't make a difference. It's like this. So VW put on, like, ALHs in a, like, Gulf Jetta chassis. You can see them. There's, like, three of them going into the coolant plant off the head just to heat up coolant. <laughs> but they don't do anything. So this right here is the intake air temp? Probably. And that's the mass airflow? Yeah, this is the mass airflow. I don't know if that's the intake air temp or manifold air pressure or both. Because that's in the charge typing. Probably pressure? You think it's all... Like sometimes they combine both sensors into one. Yeah, these... These glow plug yeah. harnesses are roach. And they're all stiff and brittle. Yeah. They're not rubber anymore. Yeah. I'm gonna just tuck that down in there. Yeah, okay. Alright, where's number three? Alright. Is that open? Eh, a little bit. You know, I can't wait. You need to do better now. I think you're gonna have to take the fuel from the door to get number four. We'll see. Right here is the box Plugs. Uh, yeah, they do. But they're not the best quality? I wouldn't use them. I mean, I don't know, maybe they're not shit. Like, some guys would probably be like, oh, I use champion wool plugs in my 1982 F-250 6.9 international diesel, blah, 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 but I don't know. I wouldn't use them. I'd only use Bosch, Bosch or maybe Beru. Oh. Uh, like an old mechanic here. See what I'm doing? So that's to uh, keep it stuck in the socket. Is my light? Is my light helping?
obvious. The best inside is on these fine automobiles. <laughs> Then drop to the back here later and I didn't. Okay. You're going to be doing other stuff besides what we're doing? What? Oh, you were here earlier today? Yeah, and I just figured... Here, just wait. That, that's fine. That's not annoying. Let's just do this. Just like changing spark plugs. Yeah, except sometimes they break off. <laughs> Don't other uh, spark plugs break off? Or? I've never had a spark plug break off because usually you can apply like actual proper torque to a spark plug. And the Yeah, you, you too. Zero. Oh, come on. So we didn't even have to fuck up the fuel filter. Except for loosening it. Yeah, but actually, you wouldn't even have to loosen it. Well, is the dipstick bolted on? Uh, no. It is a tube, that's a new tube too, it's been replaced, uh, so it like snaps to fit down there um, and they break all the time, like the, the tube just gets brittle after enough like oil vapor and age and heat cycles, you know, whatever, it's plastic, uh, but so no, it, I'm not going to take it off to show you because it'll just break, um, 
But so they're like 15 bucks. Don't buy one except at the dealer. Like the ones you get at the parts store ship and they'll fail right away. Sometimes they'll even break while you're installing them. But what we used to do would be to replace my thing. We don't worry about it. Don't I'll put it back. Uh, uh, so I think what we do, one, so we used to use all the time, like for getting things together, especially like on engines, like let's say, you know, some like hypothetically here, some seal or something, you know, normally goes kind of rough over something else, you know, or like installing that dipstick tube uh, kind of sucks. We'd always use a little window cleaner, like Windows. just psh, foaming window cleaner, you know, out of the can. Because even if it's in the oil and stuff, it'll just boil off. Um, so we just use it like soapy water. Because it has a high enough boiling temperature, it'll just be passed right through the engine. Yeah, it's just alcohol and whatever. But also, but what we do, I think, is we get a teapot and we'd like get boil. We'd soak the end of it in boiling water, or like boiling soapy water would probably kill two birds with one stone. And then you get it like all soft, and then you can push it on, because it has to go over like a bead. Oh. And if you try and do it cold, it's a real bitch, and you can like tap on it stuff but I've cracked them but so I'd always put them like in like a little like just jar of you know just water that was just off the boil um, but yeah oh okay, yeah let's fuck with the harness uh, so where are you going hang on let me just get in here and find yeah yeah I can see it uh... dude it's kind of right actually it goes far yeah, okay. Now we'll just... I hate doing that shit. How come? I don't know. I like replacing it. There's like, really, you know, fully... Thanks for sticking around for the whole video. Let me just do a quick outro. Um, after this, we cut the old boots off and then soldered the new ones on. We put heat shrink over it, made sure everything was nice and watered tight. Then we uh, decided to put... Or, after that, we put the frost heater on. I'll link it down in the description. It worked wonderful at negative 40 degrees. At that point, I just kept it plugged in. When I drive, I'd plug it in when I got to work, when I got down to maker space, when I got home, just so I won't, just so I don't have the engine cool down and not be able to warm up. It would warm up. It would just take a lot of power. So. Frost Heater worked wonders this winter. Um, thanks for watching. Please comment rate, and subscribe. And thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Talk to you later. See you in the next one. Bye.